It is life hacks. This is kind of like the second season. I really hope there's somebody listening to this episode who's not got any of the weird references so oh, far dude, and just thinks we've all got Tourette's. Have you seen the Alan Partridge thing where he's talking about how to wash your hands in a train toilet without touching anything? So he's like, elbow, elbow, soap, soap, tissue, tissue, down, <laughs> kick the door, open, done, out. It's like, that's, <laughs> that's how my morning feels. Yusuf, why have you put Kermit the Frog behind you on your... He's, he's back again. Can you, can you just tell me when he goes I away? I cannot, <laughs> I cannot believe... It is life hacks time with Johnny and Yusuf from propanefitness.com. How are you doing, gentlemen? Good. All very good. good. Are you doing the Macarena? I don't think it's like that, is it? It's that. That looked more like a, a mime artist pretending there was a glass wall. Pretending yeah. to do the Macarena. I'm, I'm not very up to date with my like 90s dance. 90s dance moves, yeah. If it, Venga Boys. Yeah, if it was anything after Venga Boys or Craig David's debut single, that's, that's your most current music, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like how Yusuf has really like a se- one series and one film to talk about when someone's like Do within each decade. Like, yeah, yeah. I've I've seen Breaking Bad, all of Breaking Bad, and I've seen Fight Club. <laughs> Do you mean either of those? <laughs> it's so I can maintain semblance of. Is it being like up Fight with... Club? Is it like Fight Club? So <laughs> look, I, I actually know pop culture very yeah, well. Um, pop culture. Um, it is life hacks. We only done one new life hacks episode, proper life hacks episode in 2020. So we should have tons. I know I've got loads. I know you guys have got loads as well. Also, before oh, we yes. started, I wanted to say thank you to everyone that's downloaded the Ultimate Life Hacks Guide. If you haven't got yours, chriswillx.com slash life hacks. Over 200 ways that you can upgrade your life. And it covers everything we've done up to now. So this is kind of like the second season. Second mm. season of Life Hacks. Stop. Life Hacks, a new beginning. A new frontier. Uh, so, hot potato, Johnny, you are up. What have you got for us first? So, mine are split between physical and digital. <laughs> <laughs> the OGs will know. <laughs> yeah, if you get that joke, congratulations. Congratulations. Which one to pick? That's the thing. That's the question. Here's a really basic it's one. It's not that got I've any. Doing. No, I've got none. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was something I've been doing recently. So, I reread Atomic Habits. We all like Atomic Habits, don't we? You just not read it yet. I'm we all reading like it. it. You're reading it. Congratulations! I'm, I've got. I'm reading two books currently: Traffic Secrets and Atomic Habits. What a set! What a setup! <laughs> so I basically, have, I mean, this is a not 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 that relevant, but I've started eating breakfast. So while things are cooking in the pan in the morning, I basically do all of the like chores in the kitchen. So I like take the bin out, empty the dishwasher, wipe the surfaces, and then I kind of forget it's happened. And you go back in the kitchen, you're like, ah, oh, this is clean, this is tidy. So it's just you, because uh, otherwise, like previously, the first couple of times I was doing, it, I was just like standing looking at the pan, like waiting for it to warm up. So just using dead time like that. And there was another example. Uh, well, a good example of that from an old one is when you were flossing your teeth in the shower, Yusuf. Yeah, exactly. So, exa- so that sort of thing. God, well, I mean, I so you know, oh, when, I do, I do have one. Yep. Sorry. Um, you know, when it's a really good life hack, when separately we haven't talked about it, but yet I do the same thing as you. Yeah. So I have yeah. on a morning, my housemate makes fun of me because we've been getting up at similar sort of times during lockdown, and there's this weird ballet that I do around the <laughs> kitchen when I'm making my food because I'm prepping my whole food for the whole day and I'm also washing up and I'll wash all of his stuff because I don't mind and I've got my podcast on, but I'm like going like cooker sink pirouette microwave freezer da, 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 da. yeah it's like this yeah. elaborate dance thing where i'm You've moving got like 50s like mary poppins music playing in the background it's ben shapiro's podcast usually which is, <laughs> actually makes you move a lot quicker yeah, yeah. Uh, what was so the you, other what was the other example have you seen the alan partridge thing where he's talking about how to wash your hands in a train toilet without touching anything no it's a piece <laughs> of <laughs> So he's like, elbow, elbow, soap, soap, tissue, tissue, down, <laughs> kick the door, open, done, out. It's like, that's, <laughs> that's how my morning feels. Well, I mean, so, yeah. it, it's so much better. Like, why wouldn't you use the time when you're cooking your food to do other things? As mm. What you can do, just look at your food cooking. So I There's a huge number of... A lot of, of people do that. Oh, it, what wasted time. There's so much opportunity for that where, like, mm. it, we so we discussed uh, this with a process engineer on one of our podcasts called Efficiency is Everything recently. And he talks very much about, like, there's just hundreds of, of opportunities during the day where you set a process in motion that requires 
time but no further input until it's done such as breakfast in the pan and then you just go you do all the stuff in between set another process in motion and it's like it's all about finding what are those initial trigger processes that you can just set going and that, so he talks about i think we we discussed this on, on probably one of the last ones about when henry ford gave his presentation of turning on uh, putting on a suit or washing your is it washing your balls first in the shower or washing your head first in the shower it's you wash your head hair first. first and it drips to drips yeah. down yeah the henry ford example is great so he was talking about how he puts on a, a suit and he does his shirt from the bottom up and then ties his tie because his hands are moving bottom up to the neck does the tie puts that round does the thing you know mm. so yeah I, I like that have you got any other do you say you had another example of what you do so it's just it? so like in in that process i will like take the bin out what like empty the dishwasher reload the dishwasher with anything that needs to be put in fill up three of these and put them in the fridge so then I just have, because like a big resistant, I don't really like drinking water. I know that sounds ridiculous, but like left to my own devices, I just won't drink water. But if there's like chilled bottles in the fridge ready to go, much so much easier. So like often I'll go back to the kitchen at like 11 a.m., forget that I've done all of this. I'm like, That's kitchens, the kitchens are great. Fucking clean in here. I've got chilled water and everything. Like this is, yeah. this is brilliant. Becca, Becca someone, <laughs> the, the cleaning fairies have <laughs> been again. Uh, I, man, so much, so much of the stuff that you can do can be like future Johnny will thank past Johnny that he hasn't even remembered. I remember one of my housemates, his girlfriend used to drunk clean. So she'd come in from a night out and clean the whole house drunk because she said the next day it was like she hadn't done it. That's clever. That's really good. Yeah. I, like, so I really like that. My, my flatmate did that when she first tried Jack 3D. Remember that pre-workout? Yeah, that got banned. Yeah. Um, she she was someone who was no stranger to class A drugs as well. And I was I had some and she was like, What's that? Can I try some? And I was like, Yeah, fine. I went to the gym, came back, and the house was spotless. And she was like, I've had a really good day, so I've been really productive. I've cleaned the whole house. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like okay, have you got any idea why that might be the case? And no, I just feel <laughs> You're just full of energy. I don't like, know what's going on. Brilliant all of the time for some reason. Yeah. A little bit sweaty, yeah. a little bit clammy, but yeah, yeah, jaws jaws going. Okay, so <laughs> do your chores whilst cooking breakfast and make use of dead time. Yusuf, what you got? So mine is coffee bags. I have discovered this recently by oh, Johnny's really Johnny's upset. This is probably a very like absolute philistine thing to say for coffee like, aficionados like you got instant guys. coffee you just it's, put it in the cup you put hot water in it <laughs> it's yeah. really quick um no so it, it it's the same niceness as proper coffee because it is just in a like a bag that's more permeable than a tea bag I only discovered this by accident because my girlfriend went to buy some coffee knew that i didn't have all the right coffee kit so she bought some coffee bags turned up and realized that they were decaf got really upset and was like, you just keep them. I'm not touching those horrible things. Brilliant. So now I've got a box of coffee bags in the house. You... So is that what you were drinking in your big cup? This was actually a mushroom cocoa. I think on your recommendation, Johnny, second hand, I got it because of hearing you talk about it on previous life hacks. And now I had some as a filter. Stuff down. like that makes me feel uneasy because it's like Mike, without me knowing, has listened to something I said a while ago, has gone out and done something. And now you've got it in a mug. It's a relaxant, though. You are aware of that. There's, it's like an evening two. blend. One, one is the chaga, and one is cordyceps. So this morning I was training my cordyceps, and then I had some of the mushrooms. And then you had a chaga. <laughs> right, big, big chaga. What's your? What's? <laughs> I, I, I could see in your facial expression that you had a criticism about coffee bags, Johnny. What's your? So, so one of mine is um, Becca bought me a temperature kettle. Now, you might think, surely all kettles do temperature. How is this different? Um, it's, a, it's a kettle that you set the temperature and it, it boils up to a certain, it's got a special spout on it that allows you to pour water into a, a filter funnel where I'm, I've been using the 466 method to brew coffee. So it's quite very manual, very slow, but delicious. So just contrast that to, so that was one of my life hacks. Contrast that to Yusuf's coffee bags. Just dunk it you've got, in a you've got the bag. full spectrum. Wow. What's the, what is the four six six method? You might as well go again. Um, it's so you you. I mean, I'll probably get some of this wrong, but it's a, I think Japanese coffee prep method where you weigh out twenty grams of beans, grind them, put them into a filter paper, 
um, beans. And then uh, you pour an initial amount of water on it. Then you wait for the bloom, which is the, the carbon dioxide being released from the beans. And then you wait. And then you pour more water, wait, pour more water in a 466 pattern. Wow. So rather than me going oh through like the God. full prep. So it's it's very, it, it's it's like a, um, a real craft process to make a coffee. Isn't it amazing? The, the branding of Japan. Like if you say anything, is, oh, it uses a Japanese method. Everyone's like, yeah. oh, Ooh. must it's be like, so like systematic. It's like this, this isn't just any bread roll and butter. This is Icelandic bread and an oh, Icelandic, Icelandic piece of butter. butter. It's nine and you're like, well, of course it's nine grand. Yeah. <laughs> Discounted down to 9,000 pounds. <laughs> Uh, f- so, so Chris, what's co- yours? Coffee bags, have you got a, a brand for those, Scope? No, I think just any biodegradable one. The only thing I would avoid is, th- this is tinfoil hat, but you know the really fancy tea? That, so it's in like a, a sort of silken right. mesh. Tea pigs have that kind of, it's like a pyramid style or a... a I don't know tr- what you're talking about, but okay. I do. Tri- what, what's, what's the like try something hedron that's like a pyramid with a triangle base okay um it's like that silky mesh not a normal tea bag not biodegradable they are the worst thing for plastic and estrogen exposure okay. because they send off little micro particles of estrogen oh that just, my god yeah. i've got okay. some in my cupboard i've got tea pigs in my cupboard they are they're, they're absolutely terrible so you don't want anyone that's using tea pigs just throw them in the bin oh Bin them immediately. Yeah, or give them to someone that you want to have more estrogen. In fact, ironically, one of the, the best ways to clear out estrogen is because your liver cannot process, it can't um, filter out the the artificial estrogens, is to sweat them out. So sweat has a high proportion of artificial estrogens that you can excrete. Best way to do that, sauna. No saunas available all year. Uh, Probably won't be for another six to ten months. That makes me sad, man. It's like the coronavirus hub isn't it making you making you full of estrogen okay so coffee bags 466 method for coffee uh my first one which we haven't covered airpod pros so they've been out for a little while Surely we've covered these like every episode no i don't we have nope i think we have i've just written i i've just written an entire <laughs> life we have AirPods. <laughs> look airpods was on the first ever episode airpod pros so i got them the day they came out i drove to the metro center to get them on the evening that they came out and i got my buddy who works there to reserve a pair for me which was good and then four months later johnny and jordan from modern wisdom <clears throat> big dicks group got a hold of a pair and started extolling the virtues and telling me about just how great they were <laughs> you were like, totally chris, have you, chris have you seen these <laughs> <laughs> Chris, well, you should get some of these. They're just, if anyone that's listening, if you've got £240 to spend on a pair of headphones, if you use them a lot, you, you literally can't get better. They're the same price as any other pair of noise-cancelling headphones. The noise-cancelling in them, you might think, oh, why do I need noise-cancelling? That doesn't sound very interesting. It It is just you existing inside of your own mind as opposed to you being within the world. It's so good. You can afford to have the sound turned down at a much lower level because the ambient noise coming in is competing with it much less, which means if you had problems with old AirPods or wired headphones in a loud place like the gym or when you're driving or something else, it's just, it's a wonderful experience. Battery life is still very strong. I've had mine for probably eight months now, I guess, since they came out. And uh, I, I don't regret buying them at all. One thing I would say is buy the Apple Care Plus, which extends the warranty for a couple of years and I think is maybe £30. So all in, you're looking at about £270, but they're, they're just amazing. If you listen, you're listening to this podcast, presumably you consume a lot of audio content. The old AirPods are perfectly acceptable, but if you've got the extra £100 to spend, it is worth it. That's what So I actually, one, one thing to add on that as well is... Um, if you've got ten pounds to spare and you're not a twat, then um, you can uh, you can get these, which are the Anchor ten pound uh, Bluetooth headphones. You can actually get thirty pairs of these before you have to buy one set of AirPods. Did you Pros. say if you're not a twat? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think what you meant to say was <laughs> if you lo- if you want to import your headphones via Yemen, yeah, you can. I was in I was in Topshop with Becca in Elton Square. I walked past. This is when I still had, you know, back in like 1999 when I had my normal AirPods. And uh, I was, I walked past and I saw like the box on the window and I was like, 
god oh, they look really <laughs> nice and i'm like walking around top shop like this is boring and i was like I'll just, I'll, i wonder whether there's any reviews like you know non-biased reviews about airpod pros you google it and it's just like page after page of these are the best headphones ever produced so i was like i'll just be back in a moment Oh, I some it's, it's the sign of a great product when you see the advert and then you're like, oh, I'm, I'm like in a bit There's of pain. There's a visceral Just, reaction because you yeah. don't own them. Yeah, it's yeah, Apple do this thing to me where I imagine you both probably have the same thing where they release something and you think that looks pretty expensive. But you kind of know that at some point you're going to buy them. It's just a matter of time. It's you like they're just on the horizon. Like, that's stupid. Like that yeah. pencil. And you're like, mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then and before you know is. it, it's before you know it, it's in your house. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Do I, do um, so I yeah, do that when I was drunk. AirPod, yeah. AirPod Pros. Final lovely thing about AirPod Pros: if you're on a plane, the best way to notice the difference in noise cancelling is if you're on a plane. So you can imagine that usually it's really actually quite loud, and you don't realise how loud it is until you can't hear it anymore. And it's not the same as not having noise because you need the noise cancelling. So if you just put earplugs in, that's not the same as noise cancelling. So you go from like to, and it's, it's yeah. so good. I was next to a crying child, which is obviously like on a long flight, everyone's worst nightmare on the way out to Bali next to a crying child. I just looked at it and I was like, ha! <laughs> Boom! you just squeeze it. Don't you give him a squeeze, give him a long, do what you want. then, then the, tr- the transparency mode of like, so if I'm like, while I'm doing my kitchen routine with my elbows and, and everything, Becca speaks to me. I'm just like, and he goes, boop, boop. Yeah. and then suddenly it's like the music's being played from over there. Yeah, and, you and it's ambient everyone. noise. The problem. I, 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 I need to um, I need to kind of caveat that you will look like an ignorant twat a lot with them in because the number of times my housemate said something to me behind me, if it's on noise cancelling with sound playing in it, you're not getting you're not getting anything. There can be a fire, and you're not gonna you're not gonna know about <laughs> the fire. Yeah. So can you put noise cancelling without anything playing? Yes. Yeah. So you can just, and is there a setting for that? You just say enable well, noise cancelling. Well, you just turn, turn noise cancelling on and don't play music. Yeah. Just put them in. If you put them in and press and hold them, they'll just... So I, I, I can see a use case for them if, if, I've, if like, you're someone that flies a lot or you, you're someone, someone that has a noisy job or whatever. Like, I would love that in the office because there's a lot of, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that with a, a binaural beats or, you know, just something low playing in the background is very, very silent. It's phenomenal. It's, anyway, just, look. it's just not very PPE, like wearing a surgical mask and with a AirPods set of looks a bit AirPods, yeah. silly. I think if a doctor came up to me and I had AirPods in, I'd be like, come on, mate. You are like, right. This is the worst day of my life. Could you, like, at least you could do. One AirPod. Not one, have your AirPods in. One AirPod. yeah. You also need to be able to hear like arrest alarms and phone yeah. calls and that kind of thing. So if that could link in though somehow with your AirPods, that oh, would be, be better. Phenomenal. Better than a better than a pager, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Two, two things on on them. Something that Ben mentioned to me was like you know the vision of the future of where you're just plugged into the internet. Having AirPods in that have any time Siri like pickup. Is that is pretty close to that if you think about it? Because all you have, you just have to say the right words, and you can and send thing, someone a, a message. Thing happens, yeah. Call someone, search something on Google, put something in your to do list, schedule something in your calendar. Like it's it, so I'm, I do it often while I'm like mid set, not mid set, between set. <laughs> like <laughs> right. the, the technology already exists for that. Like I watched a video of this coder who just decided for fun to do the, you know, we can request a download of all your data from Facebook or Google or whatever. He did it with Google. And it sent him 175 gigabytes of, of data oh that he could download. And it was just hosted on a public URL, like obviously a long string of characters and stuff. And it was like long audio recordings of just like pre, like before him saying like, okay, Google or whatever. And he went through some of them. And one of them was like, Google, do you ever have um, problems when your diarrhea is so bad that you went? And he's like, well, okay. Like, but it's, it's insane how much he's like if they've only got that much data on me like imagine multiply that by everyone yeah. else uh, okay so johnny what you got um <clears throat> last thing on airpods <laughs> Just before, so i found this thing called um you might have heard of it chris i don't think you have come across this called better touch tool <laughs> i don't know whether you've heard of it before yeah um so basically if i press command shift a it connects my laptop to my airpods from my phone to my yes. AirPods. Johnny, I'm so proud. So that's a good switch over, an, an easy way to switch over your... Yeah. 
I yeah, have to say, on your I, phone. I, I have challenges making it work with my MacBook. I tend not to. Every guest that I've podcasted with who's tried to use AirPods or AirPod Pros to do a uh, podcast has mm-hmm. challenges, whether it's on Skype, whether it's on Zoom, whether it's on like whatever, they just tend to have challenges. It seems to be a little bit better optimized for your phone than it is for your laptop. I think they're great for, for FaceTime or like audio calls, but less so for Zoom or something like that. Yeah. I'd agree. Okay. Um, have I mentioned Brain FM before? I don't think I have. Yes, but we can go, we can go through it just because I don't think you went in very deep. So it's it's something that so I've tried lots of these services in the past. I've tried like Focus at Will. Um, there's another one. I can't remember the name of it. Like they play binaural beats. They play like noise to try and help you focus. Um, Brain FM is one I've tried more recently, and it. I, I mean, I, I think Yusuf's tried it and doesn't notice anything. There's a few other people I've mentioned it to who have seen a huge boost in in like focus and concentration. So Bre- they do like a three day free trial, I think. So Brain FM. They have like a focus playlist, a relaxation playlist, a nap playlist, a meditation playlist for different types of um, binaural beats, basically. It's quite a lot of research behind what they're doing. Like they produce a white paper behind all of the the, the, the research they're doing. And What's they the sponsor price? like it's well, it's free for three days and then it's like £10 a month or five ninety nine a month, something in that range. It's fairly expensive then for binaural it, beats. It is. It is. So you have. So that's why I think like get the trial, see if you notice anything. But Ben's even said things like he noticed he started procrastinating and then realized that the procrastination had started at the end of his like 30 minute focus music window and stuff like that. So I think try some people like it. Some people don't. I get a lot out of it, but try it for yourself. They also have a it's a web. There's a web version as well, which I really like. It, ben. it is quite nice from a musical quality perspective as well. Like it's unintrusive. And I think the music's designed not to be like surprising. It's all just very like, mm. but um, but um. And I I think like I I'm not up to date with the data on binaural beats. Last time I checked, it was very inconclusive, but that was like a few years ago. So it probably still is. To... As with most of this stuff, though, if you believe in it sufficiently, that like the placebo That's effect it, yeah. is the most reliable effect in all of pharmacology, isn't it? If you could bottle the placebo effect, <laughs> you'd have a panacea. Oh. Um, so uh, Ben Greenfield, Ben Greenfield loves Brain FM. He says that that's part of his right. daily part of his daily routine when he has his nap. I don't think he says he didn't mention that he uses it as part of work, but he uses it for his naps. So if it's good enough for Ben, it might be good enough for everyone else. I like is there a referral code? Have you got a referral code or anything like that? I probably do. Yeah, just give me the link. It'll be in the show notes below. Everything that we talk about, AirPod Pros, uh, whatever coffee bags I managed to find, and all that stuff, are always linked in the show notes or in the description on YouTube. Yusuf, what you got? So. As you know, mine are split into different categories. Um, this one is a social one. Chris, it was you. Um, it's to ask a friend to take you clothes shopping. I think you get a layer of objectivity, no matter how good or bad your sense of style is. Like mine was terrible. But the T-shirt I'm wearing right now, in fact, the shorts I'm wearing now as well, plus everything you're seeing here, beard, nose ring, tattoo, it's all just Chris and a friend of mine called David, who I think are both equally attractive men, but on different ends of the the male style spectrum. And they both had a concordance with what they were recommending that I do image wise and fashion wise. And and it started with burn those horrible green loafers and every purple cardigan that you've got. (laughs) Get rid of your tracksuit bottoms and just let me bloody take you shopping. And Chris kindly took me to the Metro Center and just went through top to toe, sorted me out. And that's lasted for years now. I've just been re-wardrobed, thanks mm. to Chris. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to do it. Like asking your friend to do anything that's kind of like, if what do you think about this as a haircut? What do you think about this as a, a as a potential style change or whatever, you know, like getting that third party perspective is good. But especially with clothes shopping, like, I don't have massive amounts of style. And I appreciate the fact that you've like put me across as some sort of style guru here, like fucking Gok Wan. But um, <laughs> uh, you are right. Like just having someone there who can go, um, maybe maybe not that maroon cardigan, mate. Not maybe not maybe not another one. Um, <laughs> it, it, well, that's it. As long as your friend, you know that your friend has your best interests at heart, and they're yeah. not just trolling you. I think Johnny felt as though we were trolling him with by trying to get knot. him to throw a top mm. knot. But yeah. As much as we try and convince him, we were a hundred percent dead serious that he would look like a, a samurai. Absolute bad, badass samurai. It's I just thought... whether looking like a samurai is is the desire is like a, an outcome you would like 
or I'm sure I would have looked like a samurai. It's just, is that a good thing or not? I I'm sure if you're trying to be a samurai, it's the best thing. I told Dave Rubin but, that he should get a top knot because we tried to get you to get a top knot and he didn't do it either. So you're part of the same Dave. thing. Next smart up, man. next up from me, the new Reebok Nano Xs. So I've used Reebok's CrossFit training shoes since the eights <clears> came out. The eights were phenomenal. The nines were phenomenal and the X's are even better. Like they're just ridiculously comfortable. They look better than most fashion trainers do. They've finally managed to nail the colorways in them. So if you're in the gym regularly, if you're training, especially if you're doing anything plyometric, any squats, anything that requires you to drive force through your feet, you need a stable pair of shoes. Now you can get away with a pair of low Vans or Converse. They're okay. But the number of times that I see people in like classic Nike running shoes, you know, like just like a, a soft, floppy pair of Nike running shoes that you can fold in half like this, which are comfortable for wearing around day to day. But when you watch someone squat in those shoes, you see the outside, the edge of their feet starting to peel the in the inner um, arch of their feet off the ground. And you're like, mate, mm. There's not many degrees of freedom left between you and just snapping your shit. Like you yeah. have to be able to have a shoe which is stable and is able to it allows you to push into the ground. Um, the Nano X is they're absolutely amazing. I can't. Uh, if you go to the gym, stop wearing Nike Hiroshis. Like they're not even shoes, let alone training shoes. Stop wearing Vapor Max, which are those uh, the things with the little bubbles on the bottom of them. They're also. Why would you wear those? Like, why would you choose to lift in these things? And it's always, it seems to me to always be the guys that consider themselves really serious gym goers. They're the ones that have got like a three piece, fully coordinated Nike outfit with the headband on and the sweatband. And I'm like, right, okay. You obviously have taken a lot of time to think about this. What's happening? Mm. What's happening with the shoes? Like, there's no, anyway, Nike Nano X, uh, Reebok Nano Xs, you need a pair. It's a. It's better than the person who wears like um, construction boots and a tank top and straps to come in and do like heavy shrugs and leave. That's a very it's Newcastle a- thing to do. <laughs> That's a very Newcastle thing to do. How many times, Yusuf, in Gold Star Gym, have you had to brush plaster dust off the bench before you've been able to get down onto? Oh, it? I'm I'm out of place for wearing gym clothes, like because <laughs> really? I'm not in high vis and paint stains. <laughs> I mean, that I, I, I kind of respect the guys because obviously, like, you've come straight from graft. You mm. haven't even had the time to get changed out of the clothes you wore at work. So presumably, your day must be so strapped down to the second that you couldn't even go into the changing room to decide Efficient to get out guys. of the paint and plaster covered rigger, rigger boots and stuff that you wore during the day. Or, or maybe that's a performance enhancer that none of us have ever seen, and rigger boots are actually the best squat shoes that you can find. So, so, so these guys are operating on really high level. They're either like bastions of like efficiency, or it's, uh, yeah, it's they're a just drug. Red, they're just red atomic habits at all. It's all about environment design. But there are definitely some people who put those, those boots on for the purposes of training. You're kidding. Uh, uh, absolutely. There's, I've seen some. There's what? some in a gym that we've all been to. Few people. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, this is, we're getting into Brian Rose conspiracy theory territory here, aren't we? Okay. What you got? So, what you got next, Johnny? Link to that. So I wasn't going to say this, but link to training shoes. I have just changed. So for the first time in, I think probably, I can't remember how, it's a long time. I've just bought some new squat shoes. Ooh. So they're no longer bright yellow and they are the Romalio fours. You had the twos? I had the twos. Correct. No one I know knows what the Romalio ones looked like. Looked like, nope. They, they must have existed, but there's Romalio twos, Romalio threes, and then the Romalio fours, and they are incredible, nice. absolutely incredible. So the Romalio threes were criticised because they were quite light. So the Romalio twos are like a brick, like you put your foot in a brick and then you're stationary on the ground and that your feet don't slide around at all. Romalio threes are made a bit lighter because they're a weightlifting shoe, and then the Romalio fours are just very very stable they've got like straps and laces and they're just cool they're just really good comfy yeah a good pair of squat shoes especially if you squat <laughs> like if, if you're doing a lot of squatting 
the way a pair of like weightlifting shoes make you feel when you train incredible yeah so i mean the, for the people that might not know the difference between something like the nano x and the rom fours is that you will have a much higher heel on mm. the lifting shoes that permits you to get more range through your hips more dorsiflexion there you go so Yusuf, exactly those Yusuf, Yusuf, exactly Yusuf, those. those black ones they look badass man um, yeah, but yeah, I, I think the vast majority of people, if you don't know what a pair of lifting shoes are, you probably don't need a pair of lifting shoes. But yeah. if you don't know what a pair of Nano X's are, you still might need a pair of them. Because like ignorance to get you through the door, you could be wearing something which is potentially going to snap your shit. Whereas if you don't know what lifting shoes are, you're probably not squatting to a sufficiently high uh, yeah, but- volume. The metric we use is if you if you're squatting 1.5 body weight, you've unlocked the right <laughs> to get some shoes. When you're belt. squatting twice body weight, you can get a belt. Oh right, I love wow. that. I love that as a as a little, a little it, rule. It's because and and you guys have to be you know much more face to face with this daily in the CrossFit gym, which is there are many people who have all the gear yet no idea mm. and they have not unlocked that achievement but they've tried to get the cheat codes and power lifters power lifters like the amount of kit that they come in with and the thing is that for a lot of them a lot of you guys it's perfectly justified heavy ass weight like a lot of heavy ass weight but when you can measure the amount of kit you've got in square meters on the floor that someone Mm. comes they open their bag up and it's just like a stuff starts flying out and when you include like bags of Haribo and like multiple cans of white monster in that. Cause you've got to carb up for those three reps that you're doing. Like the, the thing that um, Johnny and I were discussing the other day was a guy back from the, like the old school golden era of fitness called Pete Rubish, who is just this freak deadlifter who would train in his like in this basement. And he's just got this like washing machine, like rattling in the background. And he's just in shorts with plates that have been sellotaped together and he's just a nutter. He's just this completely like unhinged deadlifter. He's pulling ridiculous amounts of weight just in shorts and barefoot for years and years. And it's like, that is the man who deserves to get himself a belt. You're allowed, you're allowed to have a belt, yeah. So, yeah, Johnny, while we're, while we're on this, I want to ask, what do you deadlift in and what do you bench in? Uh, okay, so I... Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, that was just a really like bad grammar question. What do you deadlift in? And what do you bench in, bro? <laughs> Listen, oh, man. Yeah, I want to know. <laughs> what is you deadlifting? Yeah. In. What is what you deadlifting I? in? So uh, my um, I I deadlift actually at the moment completely barefoot. Wow. Okay. Controversial. What I've seen. Completely naked. Yeah, just. To be honest, raw, I, I this is, so like one of like in training in the, in my garage, like I. The other day I was like, I'll just not bother putting my deadlift shoes on, see how it feels. It feels mint. Like being completely barefoot deadlifting feels absolutely class. So that, in, do you mean in terms of shoes? Yeah. Yeah. So, and then benches, flat shoes. Some people, I th- that's because of my morphology. Um, like the way I have to put my feet to get mm. like legal form. A lot of people deadlift, uh, bench, sorry, in in lifting shoes as well so to get like more extra clearance yeah. off the ground. You can get your feet closer to you and still have heels on the ground. If you are 85.5% legs, that's not, yeah. that's then not obviously, something. yeah, you actually want less. This, if anything, the thing that's, that's very unfair is that in competition, people with short legs are allowed a block to put their feet on. Right. Because what? they can't reach the ground. Oh, like, okay. Didn't. Right. But like for me, I, you know, I have the opposite problem. Why can I not have holes in the ground? Surely that's fair. <laughs> like as soon as we're as soon as we're moving the bar here of like what you can and can't have, like that's surely a really good point. It was Tim Garrett who told me about it. Because otherwise, it, that, that assumes that um, the bench is maximum height, and anything putting blocks up is for accommodate for shorter people, mm. which is not true. This is the how wide should airplane seats be discussion all over again. Isn't oh it? We yeah, don't need, we don't need to get into that. Okay, so um, barefoot for deadlifting and flat shoes or lifters, depending on your height for benching. Uh, Yusuf, what you got next? This is an app called Get Human. I don't think we've discussed this in the previous ones. This is where you will save hundreds of hours. Where if you're on the phone to like customer service or whatever, trying to 
like upgrade a service for something or tech support and you put on hold listening to the same 10 seconds of Craig David, um, that's where you can use get human and it holds the call for you and calls you back when a human answers the phone. It's not a hundred percent reliable because it involves the per- the operator like pressing a button as well. And then it calls you back, but rather than having to sit on the phone and wait on hold, it's pretty good. That's, I mean, so I, I don't actually mind the, the concept behind it. I have to say that if, is it free? Yeah. Why, why are they doing this? I don't understand what's the so business model. It's, it's because that there are many, I think they run on advertising, that there are many companies that have an automatic callback service. Mm. But I think, and I, I'm convinced of this, that a lot of companies' customer service and tech support, particularly during COVID, is deliberately obstructive and deliberately difficult to act as a deterrent so you don't call them up. The same way that if you try and like speak to a customer service rep, for like one of the budget airline companies, you're just well, not you, getting through you, to anyone. You get the dark patterns on the back end of the customer support thing. Do you want oh, to submit? Yeah. Do you want to check out our like forum where other people have submitted answers to your question? Well, I don't want to go and search for other people asking the same question that I've asked and not getting a response. I just want mm. a man. This I is just why. Want a man. This is why. That's why bulb, I love bulb. Bulb energy. Yes. That's it. That's why bulb energy because you can. It's amazing. You just call them up and they're like, "Hello, bulb," and you're like. Uh, well, uh, I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. Um, I've, so I've, well, I've got a problem. If you call like, Apple, so Apple initially, it's like there's a, a there's a bot that says, "I am an automated bot. I can handle any plain text sentence. Just say what you need." And you're like, "Okay, say a sentence." And then a couple of seconds later, it's like, "Hi, mate, through to Apple," and it's yeah, clearly so just a um, guy at home. Like it just it. <laughs> It was like, I've got this question. All right, all right, no problem. Yeah, how, how can I help? Like, what the fuck? Like, Whoa. Th- there's this international company, trillions of things happening, right? And yet they've just got a bloke who probably lives on my road yeah. to help me out. I had a I had an Irish girl pop up with a assistance that I needed for garage band. I was like, I couldn't work out how to turn off MIDI metronome something, something, and did exactly that. I can't remember there being me just saying a thing. I think I might have submitted it's it online it. and then they rang right. me. Um, no, if you ring, yeah, if you ring them, ring them. Initially, there's a that's an AI. Intense. That's intense. I, have I to don't say, spend that long waiting, though. For, me neither. For, me neither. You I think see, it's a, it's it's part of the uh, the architecture, isn't yeah, it? It is. It is. <laughs> the ecology, so, the ecology of a SCOBY problem, it has is. My, inbuilt my... into the structure <laughs> of the space time. It has these long waits because it's not it, me it that. It's not me that submitted the initial request. It was actually my sister, and my sister decided that she was going to do it with a credit card, which then she cancelled. Actually, there's an ongoing lawsuit to do with that, so we're going to have to get... It results in you having to go to your local news agents to get a card to plug in to like to put more energy into your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Luckily, the, the most recent one was me. This is another life hack, was me upgrading my internet speed. So going from virgin, like 100 megabit to just the maximum thing. And it, like, because of COVID, everyone's just decided that nothing can run anymore. And we just, oh, sorry, we've just lost all humans and all staff to help anyone with anything. So um, you can just send them a letter and then they call you back. It took, I mean, it took them letter. 45 days to call me back after sending the letter. But when they did, I was just like, look, I'm just trying to give you money. Like, I don't get how that's a life hack. I don't get how waiting for... Them up and trying. So you would sooner have bad internet for an extra 45 days yeah. than... Right, so this is... this is. Well, there's no other way to get hold of... Because like, you, you try calling. You just you cannot. It's just a brick wall. So oh, you're like, okay. well, how else can I get in touch with them? Letter. I, f- I feel Did like... you hand write the letter? No. Don't be silly. Did you use a printer? No, just online thing. You can send letters online. Oh, See, so you, can, you can write and send a letter online for about 50p. Really? Oh, What's that? that? There's loads oh. of services that do it. So you just you type up a letter or you upload like a PDF or a Word document and it posts it for oh, you. Oh wow, that's amazing. That's how's that not on your mouth on your life hack? <laughs> like we've had to. It's just so embedded the, in my the, mate, the, we're, the we're, base of this. We're desperately trying to fucking pull every sinew we can <laughs> out of this weird service that calls you back when someone answers the phone. <laughs> when you've got this pure gold. 
this <laughs> unobtainium level life hack sat there. Well, right. So, do you know what? You know why? Like, how often do you find yourself in a scenario where, like, you need to print something out? It happens maybe like once every six weeks. Yeah. But when you do, yeah. it's like, oh, yeah. it's so annoying. Yeah, I'm gonna, but if and there's then, a service where and you, you just... And then your ink has run out and then you have to get paper and you're just, uh, you've only well, got I mean, this, you like, don't have really... any stamps. You don't have any you envelopes. Have to to, you have to go to PC World and get Hewlett Packard ink for it. You're like, oh my it's God. Balling. This <laughs> is, write a letter online, mate. That's, that is that's phenomenal. phenomenal. That's 10 out of 10. <laughs> and also the fact that I'm so blown away by it means that I have no lateral thinking because obviously if moonpig.com exists and you can send someone a fucking birthday card, you can definitely write a letter. Yeah, you only know moonpig exists because of moonpig.com. Like where's the, where's the virtual letter service song? Oh, man. It's, it, it's part of my like paperless ecosystem because I'm just so averse to paper. I'm so like angrily like mm. pissed off about paper that I've just developed this like mm. workarounds for everything that involves me not do, having to do you have a recommended pen. service then if someone needs to send a paper letter don't yeah. send google it don't go, you can't no i'm i'm alfreding it it is uh cfhdocmail.com that sounds so bean yeah. There's also <laughs> I, there's also lmail.com no you if anyone mail. anyone can google this what we wanted was I'm not Googling the it. Service. These are my these are my favourites from <laughs> Alfred, Chris. <laughs> these are my snippets. So which Don't what, worry. Are they, what are the two of them? So l mail.com and cfhdocmail.com. Cfhdocmail.com. Wow. Okay, so I, we've worked out why this isn't working, Johnny, because all the companies that have done it, their branding is atrocious. Yeah. One of one of those two will break your iMessage. So there's a really <laughs> so, so there's a really easy kind of business win there. If anyone's good at branding and marketing, just approach one of those companies and be like, guys, Please, branding's terrible and you're offering it. such a good service. There we you go. Because yeah, they're right. on they're on the they're on the edge of it, aren't they, with sending cards to people. Mm-hmm. Like virtually sending cards and presents and flowers and all if that Moonpig, sort of stuff. If Moonpig just pivoted and added <laughs> that service in. I reckon they'd they kill it. Right, I've got I've got three in a row that are all kind of the same thing. So I'm on okay. a I'm on a cut at the moment and dealing with hunger, working out the best way to try and not break my diet and stuff like that has been something I've enjoyed playing around with over the last three months during lockdown. So first thing I've got, this is taken from Ben Bergeron, which is if you get the hunger pangs during the day do a small amount of exercise. So like 30 press-ups, 30 squats, um, go for a, a light walk or a light jog or something like that because that actually switches off the rest and digest system and it changes the way that you sense hunger. So if you do, I promise you, if you feel hungry and you do 30 press-ups, you don't feel that hungry anymore. It makes a marked impact on how hungry you feel. So that means that you're less likely to break your diet. Next thing, another Ben Bergeronism, which is so clever. If you tend to cheat on your diet on an evening time or on a night time, perhaps just before bed, clean your teeth immediately after eating your last meal of the day because you don't want to then try and have food on top of clean teeth. It's just... You feel like a bit of a twat, like after, if you're like, oh, I want to, man, I've just brushed I my want teeth. to enjoy it, this yeah. crumpet, but actually I've got minty fresh teeth or whatever it might be. Um, <laughs> and also it's, going back to James Clear's, it's part of the system of getting ready for bed, right? Like you don't usually eat after you clean your teeth, therefore clean your teeth earlier. And the final hack I've got is just go to bed earlier on an evening time. Like, if I cheat on my diet, it always happens at night. So if I make sure that I'm in bed with teeth cleaned maybe half an hour earlier, that's it. Like, I'm not going to get back up. You get out of bed to go up and then make a bowl of cereal to then get back into bed. So So this is all increasing the dickhead factor of any, of any like defaulting on it. So it's the fact that you have to then go out of your way. And then you, as you're doing it, you've just got this big flashing light in your head that's dickhead dickhead and you're like oh hang on i can't do that so i'm just gonna go back to sleep yeah yeah no that's it man and the the press ups when hungry thing i couldn't believe it also i've gotten into the routine of doing uh press ups just before a podcast just to try and get a little bit more awake because mine tend to be on an evening time and i guess that's similar to the it puts you in like a like a, a peak state almost yeah, peak state. Peak state. So um, there's there's a similar strategy which one of our clients used. So Ricky, great uh, great suggestion on this one was it's also called the five pound dickhead strategy. I've got a video on it, which is that 
he keeps a five pound or a 20 pound note in his back pocket and if he's ever gonna buy food when he's out and about so like eating out or um you know doing something that's off his targets he has to pay for it in cash and physically hand it over and then like just to minimize the kind of contactless payment not thinking about the whole thing process Mm. I like that. It's the uh, increase in friction. There was that study done where they asked people uh, on the out uh, the exit of a supermarket, how much do you think your receipt was? So they took their receipt off them and said, how much do you think your receipt was? And the difference in how people that had paid cash, people that had paid card and people that had paid contactless was oh. insane. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't tell you. Like if I pay contactless, it's just like... Because cash makes it real, doesn't it? Like having to count the money out makes it feel real. Whereas if you just have to touch your phone on something, you're like, oh, well, that didn't happen. Do you do that I'll thing? I'll deal with that later. If it's a self-service, do you do that thing in Asda? I try and do this where I'll pay and then ba-ding! And then I'm trying to be out of the door before it prints the receipt. I'm like, right, that's it. Bag, phone, pocket, AirPods, <laughs> transparency mode off. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, spin. Oh, I can't do self-service. It, really it just oh it's so frustrating unexpected item in bagging area and then you have to go and get the little person to come and help you and I, i'm just rather get do you know what i've noticed it. about those right there's the more expensive the shop the the better and the more trustworthy the self-service system is you shop at waitrose, the waitrose ones well. are, I, don't, I don't shop at waitrose but i have shopped at waitrose and if you do use it at like at waitrose and m&s the the like you can you can stick whatever you want in the bagging area it doesn't really notice that's that's it's because it's got like an ai machine learning system yeah. that's because the bourge, the bourgeoisie obviously aren't stealing a pack of percy pigs however the the proletariat in the street when they're in aldi or lidl like they're that's so true like they've probably dropped the sensitivity to the to be fair i've not set foot in a supermarket in years so i don't even know what they look like <laughs> yeah. um here's another thing i noticed so in asda in the uh, the self service checkouts, they have uh, an alert that says um, that's scanned. Please place it in the bagging area, and that comes on so soon after scanning something that it's really irritating. Even with noise cancelling on, you can still hear it a little bit. So what I think here's my hypothesis about why they have it come on so quickly is that you turn that voice off when it registers the weight flat and static in the bagging area so if you think that actually encourages someone to scan stuff as quickly as possible and place it in the bag to turn the noise off what do we think do we think that might be true nice yeah i I think all these like all these incentives that are created at scale must be really really well thought through Mm. nothing's done i I think nothing's done by by accident man nothing the placement of food in supermarkets like where it is on the shelves the the ordering of things in shell and shelf items are like whole science behind isn't there Oh, massively, yeah. Just to yeah. get people to spend money in, in, play, in these places. They've got different um, different rhythms of music in McDonald's at different times of the day. So when they've got people with a high turnover where they know that they need extra seating and extra f- capacity, they have <laughs> higher energy music, yeah, to get people in and out of the doors. <laughs> it's the same reason why when you walk into a, a supermarket, they have like the fresh fruit and veg and the flowers and stuff at the front. Mm. How, how welcoming it is and the freezers always tend to be over the far side and all this sort of stuff you're it's, not supposed to walk it's around the edges isn't it stay around the edge for the healthy food and it's in the aisles that's where all this, that's where they get you i mean you say that but the bakery in as the pastries is, yeah oh. is on the edge yeah Fuck yeah that. yeah true yeah there okay. are there are some bakery based products that be hard to over consume just due to the volume if There's they've a got a buttery biscuit easy. base buttery yeah. buttery, bu- okay. yeah, buttery 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 got the base the buttery. base Biscuit the biscuit base. biscuit base yeah i i just i really hope there's somebody listening to this episode who's not got any of the weird references so oh, far and just thinks we've all got Tourette's. yeah well, there's tons yeah. of there's tons of people that are getting exposed to episodes for the first time and to to all of you you need to go back and watch every episode all 185 episodes before this one so that you understand what's going it's like joining gray's anatomy at season 15 so you can't do that you've got to go back <laughs> got to go back right um we don't go back to our podcast though we listened back to one of our episodes recorded in like 2009 or something and it was horrendous uh, yeah man. it takes time it takes time to develop the to develop the, the skills right anyway johnny what you got next up this one might upset you Seth. good good thanks chris <laughs> good <laughs> omnifocus doesn't upset me. I, I want to love OmniFocus. Okay. Because I know how 
Complete all you have it. to do is start using it. So I, I listened to a guy. So does everyone know what OmniFocus is? Do you tell, you, tell, no. tell, tell it's everyone. A, it's a to-do list app. So it's like things or tick tick or to do list or any of those things. It's a bit, it's, it's got fewer um, sort of fancy features on it, but it's designed for GTD, getting things done. And if you've been, if you've done what Chris said and has listened to, listened to all the episodes leading up to this, you'd have heard David Allen talk about getting things done and why that's such a complete methodology. David Allen is on this podcast this week. Again. No, I haven't. Or are we in? The, we're in the time loop. We're in the time loop, yeah. So this uh, is going to go out line. after after I've recorded with Got him, it. but before I publish it. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So, so, so if you're wondering what's getting things done, Johnny, yeah. you'll find out later this soon. Week. Yeah. Um, so, OmniFocus has it, it, it. One of the things that I think is something you'll probably hear David talk about is how important a review habit is. So, lots of people have a list. Lots of people look at the lists, but then. It's so something I've written down here is like one of the one of the best places to get yourself to is feeling okay with all the things you're not doing today or all the things you're not doing right now. So knowing that all of the stuff in your world, like all the projects and the things you need to remember and all the reminders are in something that you will see again at a regular time or at the right time. And OmniFocus basically makes that makes the review feature, the review habit very very easy How? it almost almost automates it so you when you set a project or a task you say to omnifocus like i want to review this every three weeks and it just throws it back into the the list that you look at uh, <laughs> on a daily basis so what omnifocus is really good at is um it gives you like a menu of relevant things so you can defer things so that you don't even see them you delay things so you don't even see them so when you look at your to-do list you don't see like, oh my God, there's 70 things there. You see, well, there's eight things I could do now. So it's very good at kind of, it has lots of layers. So the things you only, the things you see are things that are relevant right now, things that you can do right now. And that links into like the ability to have, and this is quite a common feature, having like location-based tags or energy-based tags. So like I'm in, New so I have a tag which is like in the center of Newcastle or at my parents' house that trigger, throw those things back into my awareness when I'm at those places. And all I see on a daily basis are the things that I could do then. Tiny little things that nudge nudge things so, forward. Some of those features wipe the floor with things. However, some of the features that things has, I'm going to get mm -hmm. will wipe the floor with OmniFocus. So if someone wants to go into the Rabbit the uh, Reddit uh, wormhole that is yeah. the uh, GTD oh, method or the productivity slash pro productivity <clears throat> subreddits, um, you will see people getting religiosity level angry oh, about yeah. whether or not OmniFocus is a true GTD app because it actually allows you to defer at times and you shouldn't have a time bet, blah, 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 all this stuff. Um, currently, I'm playing around with Things 3 and I love it. However... I am not using it to its full capacity and some of the features you've just said there with OmniFocus it's are also, also great. Things doesn't have a review function. But so I think, I think that's the main th thing. This is why there's no like best yeah. productivity app because and the reason people are so religious about them is because they've got their own use case or their own kind of way that they would process something. Because they've bodged it to fix the problem that it doesn't quite actually fix, which gives them a sense of ownership over the way that it's now being deployed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Something that, which is, a, I guess, the the hack that's relevant for anyone, regardless of app, was I, when I moved over to OmniFocus, I bought a course. So I heard OmniFocus being described as like learning to snowboard. So when you, I've never snowboarded, but, it, you know, apparently when you first start to snowboard, you're like falling over and look, like you look stupid, can't work it out. But then like after a couple of weeks, you're like, you know, carving down the slopes and everyone's really impressed. And OmniFocus is, there's this big hurdle to get over with setting it up. So I bought a course that guides you through that. One of the things the guy says in the course is don't use fake due dates or like times because your brain learns to not trust them. So he talks about like you would only ever use a due date for a to-do list thing when there are actual major consequences of it not being done at that time. And I like I said this to you stuff a while ago, and I think everyone has the feeling of like, yeah, like that thing's Due, been due on my calendar and now it's been overdue for three weeks and it's like well it wasn't actually due then and all you're doing is detraining when you see a notification on a to-do list app 
you just don't trust it anymore. It's, it's just a, something you, else. You've just written, you've used the due date as a guideline for when you'd like to be to get it done by. Yeah, it's just you saying, I should probably do this soon, yeah, but it is, didn't have to be done three weeks ago, so there's no point in using it. Like, that's not what a due date is for. What's the um? So, what's the It's course? the equivalent of people snoozing or, um, you know, we were talking about this a while ago when people like when you're writing like a dissertation and then you save the file as final and then you're like oh final two you know, final yeah, final dude, final, the final absolute final. final so i see this this is the most hilarious breaking the fourth wall stuff i've got partnership with Blooms- bloomsbury and penguin random house and bonnier books and all this sorts of stuff and i'll often get um so ryan holiday's new book uh lives of the stoics which is coming through is the first pdf i've ever got ever in history which is named the title of the thing that it is Every other PDF that I get, which is sent through with a, a non-disclosure agreement saying you can't forward this on, and it's always watermarked with my name and my email. So if I ever mm-hmm. do decide to send it to someone and they leak it, I'm That's fucked. That's clever. Um, but it's always um, uh, the art of war, um, uh, f- fourth pass, final, um, like Q- QC 10 out of 10. So it's like they've, they've had the fourth pass through of quality check. It's 10 out of 10 undone. It's this. Or it'll be like um, s- still to have cover. All mad. Matt, Yusuf just left the call. Looks that way, doesn't it? Can he rejoin the call? Can we just continue now without him? I think so. I hear he's back. He's oh, you're back. back. Where'd yeah. you go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, my, my life just went... Black for a minute. Everything just went black. And then um, you what's the again. course? What's the course that you did for OmniFocus, Johnny? I'll have to get you the, the name of it. Cool. Uh, so um, the link to OmniFocus and to the course that Johnny followed will be in the yes. show notes below. Okay, let's start. Uh, let's start doing a, a quick, quick, fiery one. Um, Quiz. What you got? Final one. So the Foundation series. This is similar to the Stu McGill Big Three, and it's by a guy called Eric Goodman, um, and it's a 12 minute training sequence to improve your posture and improve lower back pain. And the reason that I fall out of the habit of doing it is not that it doesn't improve my back pain, but just that it's hard. And so what I've done now is I've just used it as a chance to listen to um, 24 minutes of an audiobook because two times speed um, <laughs> out in the morning, especially when it's sunny, just out in the yard doing the doing the program uh, it's a free video on it's on youtube it's called the foundation series um founder or something 12 minutes very unpleasant but you feel like your glutes and your hamstrings are just on the rest of the day and your lower back just goes oh i'm why not going to it, carry the load of all this why is it better or different to the big three stuff it's i think you can do it in addition to the big three um but okay. it's more of a it's more of like a a sequence um, so you can turn the big three into like a, a pre-workout I, I or have, morning so thing I, that you do. I, I have my big three done by the by the second, so I know uh, four minutes and forty seconds that I've completed my modified curl ups. I have twenty seconds to transition myself into my side plank, side <laughs> plank, and then I've got a cat cow like a one minute and twenty second cat cow transition into the, and then at fifteen minutes and forty seconds I'm done. So you're right. You can turn anything that you do sufficiently frequently. The ba- the ballet of the kitchen is essentially kind of like a sequence, right? Like it's now it's the microwave, now it's the oven, now it's this thing. Um, so is this a is this a, a injury prevention thing, or is this because do you guys do this because of back problems? That, that's that's why I do it. I, right. I I put up a tweet the other day saying like, what is this weird new wave of people that are doing hours of prehab in the absence of injury, and how is that how has that become Where a new training that? style? Where have I? Well, just just everywhere you see. I I think I missed a memo between now and like 2015 and now <laughs> that like has suddenly made people not actually train for anything and just do prehab as their workout. I haven't um, seen this, man. I haven't. We uh, are. We. I, I think we're just subscribed to the wrong the wrong people. Like a lot of the PTs on Instagram and stuff are just doing like it's not Pilates. It's not specific injury rehab. It's just like stuff for the point for the sake of it and people who don't look like they lift that are spending hours training every week without a specific purpose or outcome and i think if you're going to be doing that stuff it has to be with a goal in mind the end goal yeah no i couldn't agree more um so my next one which i've been doing for years and years and we've never mentioned is start with the weakest side in a unilateral movement in the gym so if you're going to do curls and you're right-handed 
start with your left hand or if you're going to do um, a single-legged, um, uh, like a Romanian, a uh, single-legged box squat or something like that, whatever it might be, start with the weakest side first. Reason being that there will be some sort of degradation to your CNS. You're also going to, even with a bicep curl, a seated bicep curl, you have to turn your midline on at least a little bit. So you have to presume that if you're fresher in abs, in being able to brace, in being able to do all this stuff, you will give your weaker side a sometimes minor, sometimes perhaps even major advantage, which will help to bring that imbalance back up. And I've always done it. I've always started with my left because my left's so much weaker than my right and um, still not managed to balance that imbalance out. But I'm so really one, you one thing you can add to that is um, you start with the weak side and then you match the reps with the strong side rather than trying to do more on the strong side until they equilibrate. Mm. So let's say you can do eight reps with the left arm, 10 reps with the right. You just match eight on the right as well. I see. So you get slightly more muscle, muscly on one side for a bit. <laughs> I get slightly it. more muscly. But less, le- less muscly on the side that's already more muscly. Until eventually you're just muscly. Everything muscly. is muscly. Yeah. Well, uh, as muscly as possible. Johnny, what you got? Uh, watch su- a subtitled film to help to combat with like two screening or make it a more immersive experience. So I've had, I get really frustrated. I don't know why, but when Netflix upload like for, originally foreign films, so aren't they aren't in English and they're dubbed and it's really badly dubbed. So like the voice just doesn't fit the situation. Like the, the intonation, the expression makes it like unwatchable. <laughs> Becca and I watched this film called Parasite the other week, which is Korean, I believe. Um, subtitled in English and I had really low expectations I was like it's really frustrating it's like re- I'm going to have to read the entire thing it's amazing how t- 10 minutes in you've almost forgotten about the fact that it's subtitled but you're completely engrossed in the film because you can't even look away from it for 5 five minutes because you, you completely you lose track what's, of what's happening. what's happening so this only so, like, works it, this only works with foreign films because there's yeah, no reason to yeah. continue watching. Exactly, yeah. So, I th- so I think there's a lot of good foreign cinema, a lot of good foreign series and cinema. A lot of them are dubbed, which com- I think makes everything worse because you're actually less likely to pay attention. But if you get the get like the version that's foreign and watch it with the subtitles, often they're, they're pretty good. I mean, I'm, um, I, I like that. Have you seen the platform on Netflix? It's about. I've heard. I've heard about so it. The concept's so cool. It's people locked in. Kind. Of, it looks a little bit like this prison, and mm. there's two people per level and like 50 stories and a huge big hole in the middle. So you can imagine that the people live around the outside of a square and in the middle of the square, there's this big hole and this elevator goes up and down, but it was, fr- I want to say French or something like that. And um, I just I went on, started watching it with the British d- dubbing overdubs or whatever it's called. And mm. it was unwatchable. So I was like, I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to bother doing it. Um, mm. I, but if I watched it with subtitles. It's such a shame. Because it's like, it's, hey, please don't kill me. That's it. Oh, oh, man, okay. Like, like, oh. Because like you think, well, you know, the actor's been picked for the role for a reason, right? Like it's not like you don't want the actor acting and then someone else not in the situation speaking it's without the right More than just tonality. that as well, because they, they have to do the work to get the acoustics of the sound to match where they are. Because yeah. <laughs> like if you're in, especially with that, the platform film, it's a very mm. unique acoustic environment. You know, mm-hmm. it's this very long uh, brick walled thing and it's going to have specific ways that the sound bounces. It's so much less immersive. Like that, that's it. It's the Im- immersion that you've got in it. If it someone's on a floor. beach, but like the audio sounds like someone in a soundproof room. Which, um, it, which it is. Which it is. <laughs> up against a microphone with a pop filter. Like yeah. it doesn't quite. But um, I would highly recommend Parasite. I think it's on Amazon Prime. You do have to pay for it. I don't okay. think it's available for free. But honestly. Wow. Brilliant. Paying for Great. a Korean subtitled I, film i never thought i'd see so i saw loads of adverts about it becca had heard about it and it was like two weeks ago and we're like should we watch this like it might be shit like decent chance it's shit and then went because it's subtitled like i resist stuff like that yeah but man it completely changed my, my view on it um to just footnote that watching a english or a native speaking film with the subtitles on is one of my least favorite things to do yeah. Because I can't not read the subtitles, which means I just don't watch the film. 
Like, so if this, this is my problem. I'm reliant on subtitles now. Like, I, it doesn't matter what language it's in sound wise because I'm just so subtitle. I, I think I just process information better in text than even if audio. it was for entertainment. Yeah, I just rely on subtitles. Hold on. So if it's an if it's a, an English speaking English film, series English I'll, audio. Yeah, I'll always prefer subtitles and. You're not watching the film. You're not watching it then. No, I'm just. I, I could be reading a book, I suppose. We're, but re- reading like karaoke style book. That's blown my mind. Yeah, me too. I hate it. There's nothing I like. There's nothing that I dislike. Different strokes. More. Yeah, man. It so is. So that means you get the benefit that I got from watching the Korean film from everything. Yeah, well, like, I'm not really because you can look away. I think that's the thing, isn't it? Like you, you, you don't have to pay attention. But I, I, I think my problem when I'm watching something is not like I want to look away or check another screen. I think if that's the case, then you're watching something that's too boring. What is your reason for using subtitles when you can already understand the words then? I just, my comprehension percentage is better with subtitles. <laughs> but again, this is my point about entertainment. Like, it, there's no quiz after finishing this episode of Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah, but you, you still want to be able to under, like, why would you watch something if you don't understand it? I don't, why can you be not? Be like, just, oh, who's, I'm just, I'm just not very smart. Bullshit, so what, no, bullshit, like, bullshit. bullshit. Of, the only piece of the puzzle that's not, fitting for me is that you, i feel like of everybody i know you have the best audio comprehension because yeah. you're on like two and a half times speed yeah on audio it's still it's still better i think like just having an extra way to that immersive reading thing that's quite popular at the moment would be something that i could see you do oh it's lovely yeah, yeah. I, I should maybe train the habit of not using subtitles to become better at understanding playing around uh, have anyway. you got have you got any more skills yeah so uh i've actually just used it now with the parasite and the platform which is to have a list of things to watch or things to read and just have it in a queue because that there's nothing worse than if you get to the end of a, a season or whatever and you're like oh well what do i watch now you don't want to just pick the thing that netflix suggests for you so if you've got something that's been highly recommended like the last thing i watched on johnny's recommendation was the gentleman fantastic oh wow film. yeah that new guy richie film. excellent excellent phenomenal film, film. Mm. would never have watched it without having that life hack in place Games i would have forgotten about it how are you someone's like, oh, you should watch this and you're like oh, okay and then two months later when it comes time to to, re- to watch it you've forgotten so i just have an evernote list with a cue based on how how much i trust the person who's recommended it <laughs> and um mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. much i think i would like the, the show and if i would have access to it i imagine you move up or down the list depending on like when you watch something, if it's good, you're like, mm, Johnny's taking the piss a bit here. We'll, we'll move oh, all, yeah, his he, well, his all of Johnny's yeah. metrics are now down. Regu- so what's at the top of your list currently? So let's have a look. To While what? he's doing that, yeah. Succession. If no one's, if you haven't seen Succession, that's tremendous. Succession, um, right. Gangs, right, that's gangs right. of London. Um, so the top ones are also Johnny's recommendations. There's Defending Jacob. Oh, that's brilliant. And decoding Bill's brain. So that's not me, I don't think. That's, that's George. George. Yeah. What was yeah. that? Jacob. Defending, Defending Jacob. Jacob. What's that? It's on Apple TV. It's about like a a kid who gets accused of murder. Wow. Yeah. There's so much good stuff out at the moment. I guess a lot of studios have realised that because people have got more time at home, that they really need to capitalise on it. Um, yeah. We've got tons of stuff. Watch yeah. watch Parasite on Amazon Prime. Watch A Gentleman, Succession, Gangs of London, Defending Jacob. This is this is ramping up. This is a big fat one. Um, <laughs> fat, uh, one. fat one. Fat one. Fat um, one. So this is my favourite hack that I've developed. I've already mentioned it on Isolation Hacks, but I'll put it in properly here. Um, for listening to podcasts that have mid-roll ads, if you're on iPhone, you can simply say to your iPhone, hey, Siri, skip forward by 60 seconds, or hey, Siri, skip forward by 90 seconds. For instance, if you're listening to Ben Shapiro, I know that his, by doing this, that his agreement deal with his advertisers is a minimum of a 60-second mid-roll ad. (laughs) Um, But he always says, we'll get to that in a second. But first, and as soon as he goes, but first, if I say, hey, Siri, skip forward by 90 seconds, I land just as he comes back in. And that's it. That's your insider knowledge, isn't it? That's your, mm-hmm. like your you but can see the matrix. You'll get there. You'll get there. Event like true, Jordy. It'll be everyone, every advertiser that you listen to, every podcaster will be sixty seconds, ninety seconds, or one twenty. And most mid rolls aren't going to be that. Um, but especially with someone like Rogan, you know that you can skip forward probably by six or seven minutes to catch the start of his guest intro. Um, I'm speaking to Brett Weinstein today, and we're talking about blah blah blah. Um, so philosophically, how is that misaligned? How is that different to having Spotify? Uh oh. 
can you use Spotify to get past mid-roll ads in a podcast? That's, that's not what I'm asking, though. Like, <laughs> I'm saying, how is it philosophically different to have something that mutes the 60-second Spotify adverts compared to Because you have to you have to sit for 60 seconds in silence. Well, that's fine. It's music. So Hang like, on a second. I thought that you paid or you use an app to allow you to not have to sit and wait in silence for someone, <laughs> but you're happy to sit and wait in silence whilst music's in between yeah, two I, tracks. I just use Spotify as like background music. So if there's 60 seconds of That's silence not, between songs... The, like, the fact that you've chosen to use it in that way doesn't defend the uh, discontinuity between those two. So, so as long as we don't fall out about it. So a podcast which, which, which like is only being supported <laughs> because of the adverts and only able to run because of the sponsors... But we're like, we're they don't make any more money by me listening to them. I'm not buying it whether I listen that, to it or not. That's like saying using Chrome with an ad blocker. Like the only reason why Google, well, Google's predominant ad revenue is from ads. So if you're blocking the ads, but using Chrome and using Google. Well, Spotify don't make any more money by someone skipping or less money by skipping the adverts or muting them. <laughs> we think. Well, not yet. Not until Rogan comes through. But I mean, the, the main, yeah. my main problem with Spotify is that you don't have access to Spotify Premium. And you get around this because you use Spotify on your MacBook a lot rather than on mobile. But the difference in how much people use it on iOS or whatever versus on macOS is going to be huge. The vast, vast, vast majority of people use it on the phone, which means that you can't choose songs. You can, everything's got to be on shuffle, which is like disgusting. Uh, yeah. Like, I don't know if I've even got it on my phone, actually. Well, there you go. Which is maybe the problem. Like, I, I would bet that a whole host of people, uh, the vast majority of people who have Spotify probably don't have the app on their laptop. Interesting. So then it's, yeah, then it becomes a no-brainer to just buy it. I think so. But I, I think you, you make an interesting point. My, my justification for it is I can listen to a 55-minute Ben Shapiro podcast in 40 minutes at one time speed because that's how many adverts are in there. So would, would you also, you know, there's certain apps like Castro which cuts out the silence between like dead silence in podcasts. But the problem is it then like means people have no pauses between what they say and it's really hard to comprehend what yeah. they're saying. Uh, no, because I want to listen. I want to consume the content as it's created. I trust Ben to be able to give me <clears throat> his delivery in a way which maximizes what I'm supposed to consume. So Sam, Especially Ben. Sam, I mean, well, there's no, there's, like... <laughs> he is like that thing where all the silence has been removed. But Sam Harris's <laughs> most recent um, episode on Can We Pull Back From The Brink, which is amazing, and everyone that's listening should go and check it out. Um, that he's ninety percent silence. Yeah, he has a lot of silence. He is just a, he talks in guided meditations. <laughs> he does. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the <laughs> the the silences in there are done for not only effect but also to allow you to consider what he's doing. It's a two way conversation between you as the listener and him as the producer. You're supposed mm. to allow your thoughts to fill those gaps. And the same I had Daniel Schmachtenberger on a couple of weeks ago, and there's. Bless you. Bless you. There is one <laughs> section in that where he's silent for 20 seconds. Wow. 20 seconds of silence. And I could have cut it, but I was like, actually, I mean, he's left this in for a reason. He's stayed silent because he's contemplating something. Are you here to purely index the information that Daniel gives you? If so, I can just get a transcript written and give you the transcript. Or are you here to actually be a, an active participant in the way that this conversation unfolds? I suppose, check that your airpods haven't run out of battery my, the number of people that were like dude i had to like <laughs> check and see if you guys had stopped and i could see it was still playing and i thought that there was a problem with the file and no it was just 20 seconds later he responded do you remember when star wars did that no there was a one of the more recent star wars films as an explosion in space because obviously it's in space and there's no no sound in space it, it went silent they had loads of apparent i mean this is just i'm remembering this so don't criticize me if it's wrong but apparently Loads of people complained because they thought they'd had a hear like a loss of hearing in the cinema. Actually, just while it was ac happening. accurate physics. Actually, just yeah. But you can just test space. if you've lost your hearing if you're sat in the cinema. What an idiot! Like <laughs> <There's> <laughs> loads of people going like, but yeah. Um, Johnny, is it, uh, are we all still friends after the ad thing? After the, <laughs> yeah, the ad cool. thing, the audio. I, okay, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just checking. I'm just checking. Um, so, this is something that I have to. Like I made fun of this for a while. Um, it's something that I found through Googling 
Um, there's a, a podcast that Tim Ferriss did a long time ago where he talks about productivity. He talks about like how just focus on one thing for two or three hours in the morning, that sort of stuff. And there's a the actual quote or the written transcript from the podcast is in the front of something called. Um, is he gone? No, I'm still here. I'm just going for a wee. Okay. Why is he taking his video off? Because I don't want <laughs> so, to. I don't want my wee to be on YouTube. Oh, hang on. So you're now in the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, right. oh, not just. I'm not having a wee at my desk. <laughs> right. Yeah, but you could have just left your desk. Oh, but you don't want to miss what Johnny's about to say. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. Can you mute your mic um, for the very for the, for the benefit of the listeners, please? Um. So it's called the productivity planner. So something that I have been doing more with, like, it's, just, it's based off the, uh, obviously, the, the six-minute diary. or the, So the, the same people who produce the five-minute journal make the productivity planner. It basically just forces you to, when you're thinking, when you're scheduling your day, you can only write down five things you're going to do. The most important thing, then two secondary, then two additional. And you also have five things in a week and that sort of thing. Um, very simple paper based i'm quite enjoying like paper based uh so i use OmniFocus as digital but everything else is paper based so like journaling habit tracking everything else is is physical um and you can probably see it there sort of on the side of that sofa so in the morning i'll use the journals one by one or use like the the, the things that i'm using one by one and move them from one mm-hmm. one side to the other and then i'm done with it mine. feels like a done yeah exactly so yeah, i've so got i've got that one easy. I've got that one over there. Okay. I've also yeah. got the Michael Hyatt full focus planner. Oh, nice. Which nice. which is according to Jordan Ayres, even better. And I have to say upon comparing the two, it definitely seems like the full focus planner might be an interesting switch for you. Um once because you well, only I get about looked, 90 I've days out of that, right? Of the productivity planner. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just I th- I thought I thought the full focus planner was more like just general journaling. I thought it was more no, fun not at diary. all, man. Not at all. Is it all work based yeah. stuff? Is it? Yeah, exactly. Right. And it also allows you to revisit where you are getting to with um, weekly, monthly goals. Um, got it. It's really clever. But I've got next time that we see each other, which actually might not be before your ninety days is up on that, based on the way the <laughs> lockdown's going at the moment. Um, yeah. I'll be able, I'll be able to show you it. But Jordan Jordan's had both and is now on this full focus planner thing and and highly highly recommends it. Cool. But the the productivity planner. Yeah, so the only reason I, I looked, so I use, I've seen it before and I was like, you know, that's a, that looks a bit stupid, but it's made by the the five minute journal people. It's based around Tim Ferriss's like productivity philosophy. So it's very simple. And it for, I think sitting down and thinking, if I'm only going to do five things today, starting with some a big project and then all the way down to little things, it's actually pretty hard to do that. It's the intentionality, so, man. Yeah, it forces prioritization. And then you realize like when you still sometimes do only four or five, you're like, I completely overestimate I no what, idea. I'm, what I'm yeah. able to do. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, man. I, I really, really agree. And a lot of people that are listening, if you were like I was a little while ago, you'll start your day upon having to do some work, but not actually know what you're going to do. It's like, right, time to sit down and do work. And it's just this big <laughs> amorphous blob that is work mm-hmm. time. But it's like, if you have a set list this is it's going to be this then it's going to be this then it's going to be this like you never have to guess what you're doing next yusuf why have you put kermit the frog behind you on your he's turned his mic oh, off. He's, turned his... he's turned his mic off and he's tried to do it for comedic oh, effect he's, he's he's back again can you can you just tell me when he goes I away i cannot <laughs> i cannot believe that you that you've tried to do the only thing that i can say that's the um, redeeming feature of that is it's not the man with the huge penis that you put on before we started recording. Because if he'd hit the wrong button there, Dean would have had an absolute nightmare trying to pull you out of... To, to draw well, we'd, we'd have had to... The worst thing that you can ever say to Yusuf is, we're going to have to scrap the audio We're going to have to re-record again. that again. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I, I saw someone using this effect the other day. Awful. And it cracked me up because now all I can see is Chris's description of... It looks like a five-year-old has coloured in your ears. With crayon, <laughs> with crayon. Ear, yeah. So is that a, is that a life hack? Don't use the fudged depth Skype. effect on Skype. Just watch out that Kermit isn't behind you. Sometimes he he creeps up. And, uh, oh. Have you got Have you got any more, Yusuf? Oh, let's see. I have. Uh, so we've done the foundation series. This one is not actually one that I use. 
because I have a second monitor. But if I had an iPad, the new version or the current version of Mac OS has a feature called Sidecar, which means that you can use your iPad as an external monitor. Sidecar. So, sidecar. 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 So, um, and that can be wireless or it can be wired. So you can literally just set up your iPad on a stand and you've got two displays. Having two displays is a life changer for getting things done. Reference document on one side, task on the other, or like even having your OmniFocus or your things or your, your to-do list on one side. And then, and so, so the, there's, there's two quotes, both from Sam Evans. So Chris will get upset, but Yusuf might listen. So one of them is there's a direct correlation between how unproductive someone is and how many tabs they have open yeah. on their browser. And his, it's not a quote, but it's an idea of him, him saying like, why, if you're only ever able to do one thing at a time, would you need two monitors active at one time? So that, that is a, that's a good question. So what I do it for is if I'm like, let's say I'm doing a web page design and I've got the original page on one and then the, the creation page on the other or the preview or um, text, like reference and and production. You can also use, so if you use TickTick, it has a built-in Pomodoro timer that you can use to fill up an entire screen that just gives you the task that you're doing. <laughs> so it's like a big black screen. Real, real Pomodoro. That I thought I was going to ask whether or not you, you do that. It's pretty cool. So Huge you, countdown says, timer. Like, yeah, big countdown timer, the name of the task in the middle of the screen, and that's it. Wow. And then you're like, right. Fuck, I'm going to do it, yeah. And then Kermit, Kermit the Frog on the other screen. Is there something oh, about... PTSD. Is there something specific about it being a second display rather than it being, let's say, just a 32-inch display? Because you, you, you could get oh, the total yeah. amount of screen space from a very large display. Someone could just plug their TV in. Is there yeah, something so, specific to do with the fact that it's two distinct, discrete displays? Yeah, so so one one way to say it is that like, if you have an external display, it's something that you may be... It, it's, it's officially a secondary display, so you're not using it as your primary focus but there are there is a display that you can get i think it's like 1200 quid which is a big curved monitor so it curves towards you and that way you would actually just put your macbook or whatever in a vertical stand over on the side and not look at it and just have the entire display in front of you mm. you can do the same with vertical displays too if you're a coder and you've got like multiple lines of code above and below then you can use better touch tool and keyboard shortcuts to send windows to either bit. side of the i bet yeah. that would take if you had like a big whatever couple of feet wide display i bet better touch tool would have a little bit of a time getting it together but once you had it fully <laughs> set up that would be pretty command beautiful. shift left or command shift right nice me. i uh i still haven't moved on to better touch tool i need to it's only very recent for me i have an initial resistance curve with all of these things yeah. I want to make sure that Yusuf doesn't get arrested or like something doesn't happen. Yeah. Something bad doesn't happen. Yeah. And then once I like, it's still fine. I usually adopt them. That it's the is, same app with Alfred. That's a SCOBY probation. So there's a probation period attached to the architecture of the SCOBY problem, which is inbuilt <laughs> to the uh, time space manifold. And once he's managed to get through that, which is usually around about six months or so with no SCOBY problems occurring, that's when you can fully implement it. The safety margin. And you're like, okay, I think yep. it's safe. It's because you have like this dis discovery and turnover of, of apps and like yep. the improvement of the yeah. pro of the process is so violent. Uh, it is high, I can't, high I can't noise, high it. noise, low signal. But um, the thing, like the, the sediment left over, those are the things. Gold. That, the buttery, yeah. the, it's the buttery bit. It's the, the biscuit, the base, biscuity, the yeah. buttery, buttery, buttery biscuit, biscuit base. Biscuit base. Um, okay, my next one. We talked a little while ago about Flume, which is a Mac app which gives you full functionality for um, Instagram. Fantastic. It allows you to upload photos. If you get the pro version, which is only about one or two pounds, I think, you can have unlimited accounts to switch between. So especially if you're a social media marketer or something like that, and you want to be able to monitor multiple accounts, fantastic service for that. However, the one thing that it doesn't support is temporary images on your inbox. So that that is every story that you reply to or that someone replies to of yours, which for the vast majority of people is how they're driving DMs in their inbox. Most of the messages that you get are just a response to something that you've put up, um, but it doesn't support it. However, Instagram.com slash direct slash inbox has the full functionality 
of your entire Instagram inbox on a browser and supports stories, story messages, allows you to see pretty much everything. There's only a couple of times where someone sent something I've not been able to get. I think it's like if it's a disappearing message which is not replayable once and it's sent by a f- people that's not a friend and or whatever. Um, <laughs> but essentially that now, and because you have, if you just use Instagram.com, you can just click the little um, envelope icon. You don't need to go to that URL, but it is in the show notes below. Um, if you go there, it's just as single focused as using Flume and getting rid of all of the different tabs because you don't see anything else. There's no other bits popping up. So you can go on, reply to all of your messages, and then leave. So this is a new function of, of Instagram. And what, what you can do, if you still want it in the kind of packaging of a Mac app, is there's many apps now that allow you to create Electron-based, um, basically a browser tab, but or the mobile version of a browser tab as a separate Mac app. So you basically put in the URL and it generates an app for you is with like, the Instagram icon. That's like adding um, a web page to your home screen on iOS, right? And then it kind of becomes an app. Oh, uh, yeah, it's exactly that. Man, and what's that called? There's loads of tools that you can that do it. Um, some are better than others, and they keep out competing each other. So I don't want to give the name of one, and then it's like this is, this is the, the best. S- this is the same as the productivity tool stuff, man. Like until someone comes up with the like OmniFocus 5 that ends up taking 80% of the market or things 10 or whatever, you know, like that ends up winning everything. And to go to just quickly loop back to the productivity app comment, I asked David Allen, like whether someone's made the app that GTD deserves. And he basically said, no, the long story is like, there isn't an app out there, which does all of the different things that it needs to do yet. Um, it needs to be interface with your brain, basically. That's what he said. That's exactly yeah. what you said. Oh, did you you listen to it? Didn't you? That's I've it. had the yeah the the inside scoop. Yeah. Did I've you enjoy that episode? episode. Did. Good, good. I already. I think it, some of the stuff that he said, like while disappointing, I did. Ex, I did expect him to say. Yeah. Like because he just uses a uses Lotus Notes right, and he uses a part of paper and a pen. <laughs> like it's not. Well, when you've not been doing this he, from the, for the last thirty years, you're not mm-hmm. going to be up to date with something which isn't Lindy. You're going to have something that you've that you developed the workflow for in like the '90s, and yeah. then you've grandfathered it in. Well, so I think like his point of like it's more about the it's about the way the, you use the tool, the approach. Yeah, so it's like, do you have a capture process? Are you processing those things? Do you review them? Then it doesn't really matter what you use. It's just like what makes most sense for me. It's why it's weird that there's so many like note editors when it's like at the end of the day, like you just want something to put text into and find. Yeah those bits yeah. of text which is lists and documents files and folders isn't it like it's not it's just that and then like loads of people make that really complicated yeah i have to say i really really love um notes for ios notes or imac notes or whatever that's my yeah. that's my go-to for stuff that's not serious and not long form but i'm just looking here all icloud notes 1330 oh but they're nested they're, they're nested in the right in the right subfolders and they they you can have tags and stuff like that but um it's just so good like and it is because if you use apple devices they have a disproportionate advantage over everything else because it's always going to be quicker it's always going to be better integrated it's always going to be blah blah unlimited space as well flotato is one of the market leaders for that for the uh, the for the rappers, flo- yeah. How 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 do I spell it? Spell like potato, but F L. F L O T T A T O. So potato F L. But float <laughs> float potato float float potato float potato. There's also native fire, which looks a bit bean. I've not used that one. It's on not, GitHub, which means it's going to be very if bean. If you think it looks bean, we're not be we're careful. Not using it. Approach with That's caution. Big warning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That big is my probation. Probation Just, period not completed. D- to be honest, if you're using native fire, if you're using anything off GitHub, usually it doesn't even have it's it's not even compiled. Like the developer's just giving you the code and you have to then compile it yourself. So you've got to then open it in terminal and do a home brew and That's turn it the into same. That. That's that way the like same you're as... in your bathroom with a big like vat of beans. No, it's the same like, as doing... your thing. What's it that you and Becca do? Is it Gausto or Blue Apron or whatever? Oh Goose... yeah. Gusto. Whatever. Yeah. Are you likening that to GitHub? Yeah. It's the tech version. Here's all of the things that you need to make your evening dinner, but Mm. it's your job to do it. However, pay us overprice. Yeah. 
Whereas yeah. Flotato is just like, here's a chicken curry that's in a pack. Hoy it in the, hoy it in the microwave. I feel like man. GitHub's I'm a, I'm a like the GitHub's like a recipe book. It's like, look, here's all the things you would need to buy and how to do the things with those things to make it into this thing. Gusto's a step ahead of that. Gusto's like the app store. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I, but I let's, get that. Again, let's not fall out about no. it. I think um, <laughs> have we got have we got time? Have you got one each for a super super quick fire round? As long as it's really quick, because I do need a wee. That's fine. Just take the thing with you. You sifted. Yeah, I'm I was not, desperate. I'm not going to take my laptop to the toilet. I just just morally, I just have a problem with it. Fine, Johnny. Have you got it feels, one? Feels unclean to me. Oh God. Um, pressure. Can you feel the pressure? Shall I? Do mine while Johnny's looking. Mm-hmm. He's looking uncomfortable. Yep, I can do. I can do Johnny. one. It's but not. Can... It's not really. A, <laughs> it's not really a hack. It's just something that, again, from Sam Evans. Like, Chris loves Sam Evans. Like he's always. Get enough of him. He sometimes just rings me and says, "Have Thank you me. listened to this video from Sam Evans?" I'm like, "Yeah, Chris, it's brilliant, isn't it?" It's Sam um, but something that he talks about, which is quite useful for just general personal development when you're sort of observing yourself, is determining your um, maximum and minimum tolerance for something that you're trying to change. So everybody has an amount of money in their bank account where they like start to look on online shopping a lot and, you know, they're like, oh, I'm flush. I spent a bit of money, but everyone else has the panic number and everyone has the weight on the scales. Like maybe not you two because you're absolutely in the whole time, but most normal people have a panic number and they're like, ah, oh, I can be a bit more like, you know, I don't, I don't need to worry about. So like observing those, and observing the behaviors that happen when you start to reach those triggers is one of the easiest ways to just like nudge your reference range down. Something he talks about is the thing you consistently achieve or the thing that consistently happens in your life is your minimum acceptable standard. So like you'll very rarely get above your maximum acceptable weight. You'll very rarely go below your minimum acceptable amount of money in your bank account. So like if you change those, that's one of the easiest ways to influence your behavior. I really like that. How do you change them? What's his advice? I think just just he, he his his advice was just simply it, like a lot of people have those and operate in that way, but aren't necessarily aware of it. So there might be become cognizant like, is the first. Step. Yeah, like there might be a, a a level of tidiness you allow your like desk or desktop or kitchen or bedroom to be before you like. All right, I need a big tidy. So like trying to notice what that is and think, oh, that's coming. I'm going to do something before it ahead of time. Just becoming aware of it. It's a very like watery, vague, fluffy thing. It's not but easy think, to like, instantiate, but it's an interesting uh, reflection. Al- Alain de Botton had a thing the other day where mm-hmm. he cited some old philosopher talking about the fact that humans go through these cycles. And he actually had, if you can imagine, a snake snaking its way from top to bottom in a mid-range, like the interquartile range of some graph. And that's mm-hmm. Hegel. Hegel. Yeah, when you vacillate between political spec, our sides of the political spectrum, or or the the Sam Evans video is called Face Off with the Devil, where you yeah you have these like top and bottom points sine, where it's like, sine or cosine, isn't it? Yeah, nice, but uh, not tan. Sine wave, no. not tan. Sine Definitely or cosine. not. What have you got, Seth? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, we can't see. Oh, that's okay. this is a, a it's a contactless charger. But this one stands up. So I think the problem with normal contactless chargers, the flat ones, is that because the charge magnetic bit has to be aligned properly with it, Man, you I'm, end up having to fiddle I mean, around a bit. I'm in with you. I'm, I, I am so one We have this problem. I, well, I have one. Oh, uh, yes. It was what I decided to buy when I first got an induction charger for my phone. I it's bought, like, oh, it's got a new I bought a, I bought to a charge flat it. one. But I have to be incredibly precise about how far up, down, left, and right it is, and if it's slightly off. Whereas if you use an upright stand, I've been thinking this for ages. Man, you nailed it! You nailed it. So it's so, fixing the point, fixing a point where you know. Well, if that is there, then the rest of it must be correct. Just too many yeah. degrees of freedom on a flat induction charger. I had a few instances where I'd like put my phone on it at night and I'd wake up and it hadn't charged. It's just dead. Oh, and so... I, it, it, t- it took two instances of that for me to be like, right, no more. So <laughs> I, I just in. sacked yeah. off the induction charging altogether. Completely. So, I just so if, you've got, the um, if you've got an Apple Watch as well, then you, there are some that have a stand and a little watch thing. Yeah. So you can have all the little Apple devices on one mm. place, which is quite nice. Man, I think that's... Obviously, lovely. if you sleep with your phone outside your room, then... Which you should. You know, anyone that's just, listening just to this podcast away from you. with their phone. In, no, man, it needs outside of the room. Like, 
digital sunset is increased. That's I'm upright induction charger. I am all over that. What have you gone for with the charger? Uh, this is a Bean one point one um, dot Bean dot In fact, it oh, it almost says Lascone. What does it there. say? Can you see we that? It says no, see. L- Lacone. That's so close. So close. Anchor lever it. Um, uh, so my final one is: if you're listening to an audio book which you need to focus on, turn the volume up. So much of the time when you're listening to something, you'll just listen at a comfortable level. Now, I'm not saying make your ears bleed, but if you have something which is louder, a little bit louder, I tend to take more notice. I tend to not be able to have my thoughts be as distracted. You have to presume that your ability to think of something else is a function of how much you're not able to think of the thing that you're listening to. And if the thing that you're listening to is taking up more of your consciousness, more of your senses, just turn it up a bit. And if you're worried about it being too loud, you can go into Apple Health and it tells you whether your whether your headphones have been turned up too loud or not. Have you done the thing on Siri where you go, hey Siri, turn the volume up to 80% and then it gives you the warning where it says, that's very loud. Are you sure? Have you had that? I've not had that, no. There you go. Well, if you, that's because you've got a pair of AirPod Pros and you've never had to have it above 65%. Yeah. But yeah, louder audiobooks or um, podcasts for comprehension definitely seems to be something. So it's like you get the you get the ten pound headphones, and then at some point have to pay for hear it like to see a consultant to to talk about your hearing, <laughs> or you just buy the expensive <laughs> nice ones. Yeah, no, you're right, uh, man. This list from today is absolutely massive. Hella big. Everything that we have gone through will be linked in the show notes below or in the description on YouTube. I will find some discount codes, some affiliate links or whatever I can get hold of to try and make you hack your life for less. Guys, people want to check out your stuff. What you got going on at the moment? Anything you want to direct them to? Just go to propanefitness.com forward slash modern wisdom. All the fun stuff happens there. Like you might think this podcast good. Check out There's that. A lot of fun there. stuff. Check out that page. Yeah. But that is that is predominantly for personal trainers or anyone looking to take things online business-wise or propanefitness.com forward slash calculator for the macros, for the secret magic macro. In fact, you can even just get the macros on propanefitness.com. You don't even have to go to the calculator. Got some it's all there. You probably have to use the calculator. But yeah, you have to use the calculator. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also check out Propane Fitness Instagram. Yusuf, you're putting up some cool stuff at the moment, man. I know you've got yeah, you a million go things points. premiered and scheduled for the next few oh, months. So. So, I'm on Twitter. Really... See, you're on Yusuf's Twitter. Twitter. You said on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter. Yeah, I was going to say, you've never been on Twitter. Ridiculous. Yeah. Bloody, bloody <laughs> stupid. Yes, thank you, gentlemen. Everything that we've gone through, including Propane Fitness's uh, appropriate links for you to check out their stuff, will be in the show notes below. If you haven't already got your copy of the Ultimate Life Hacks list, 200 ways to upgrade your existence, that will be linked below as well. Gentlemen, until next time. Oh, do you know what it is? Next time is going to be episode 200. 200. Mm-hmm. Two hundred fan Q and A. So, if you've got some questions that you want me, Johnny, and Yusuf to answer, episode two hundred, we will be reading them out live on air. Uh, thank you, and thank you. Oh, thank you, and thank you, and oh, thank you. Thank you, and a. A. <laughs> uh, okay. Goodbye, then. Bye, Dan. Bye, Dan. Bye, Dan. Bye, Dan. Bye, Dan. Bye, Dan. Bye, Dan.